This is going to be a short lesson on improvisation. The method is called uh, partimenti or partimento. It was uh, developed in the 17th century. All the greatest composers were educated in this method. Uh, Bach, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, Handel, Buxtehude, etc. Uh, most students started when they were around the age of five. They went into the conservancy. They studied till they were 19 and they studied six days a week, eight hours a day, and um, they came out as magnificent improvisers. And not necessarily composers, because back in those days, uh, getting paper to, to compose on was, was difficult, so most of the musicians were improvisers. And uh, teachers such as Bach used to write down their works, and that's why he's famous today, is because his, his writings have endured. But can you imagine all the great music that just kind of disappeared into the ethers? So, uh, the method, this requires you to have basic knowledge of music theory. For instance, you must know every key, and you must know every scale in that key, both major and minor, and you must know how to harmonize the chords within that, that key. So, for instance, I'm going to play the key of C because uh, it's easy to see. So. Here's the C scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. However, instead of thinking of letters or solfege, back in those days they thought in numbers. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they didn't think in chords, they thought in relationships. So the notes were, were based upon what they were, could be related to. So, so this may be a C, um, oh, they, they would see it as a one, maybe, because in the key of C, it could be a one, C, E, G, or it could be a three, A minor, or it could be a, a four, as in F, or it could be a, I'm sorry, a five, as in F, or a four, as in G suspension. So that's how they saw their numbers, or the, or the notes. And of course, to know the harmony, once you know the scale, you know that every chord must have a one, three, and a five. S some degree of a one, three, or five. So in the key of C on one, or Ionian mode, as they would refer to it, here's um, the Do, or the one, and to harmonize it, you'd add three and five. So if you went up to the two, which is a D, you would harmonize that with the three and the five. And if you played the third note of the scale, you'd harmonize that with the three or five. This becomes one, this becomes three, this becomes five, and so on. So that's how they found the one, three, and five of any note. And again, they're not thinking in keys, they're not thinking in chords, they're thinking in relationships. So here's a simple example. If I played this note, I could say it as any possible number. But I'm going to see it as a, I'm going to see it as a four. And then I'm going to play this note, which is the five. And if I'm going to make a chord out of that, since I already got the five, I'm going to add a one, and I'm going to drop this four down to the three. And that becomes a suspended fourth to a three. So I have the one, three, five. And then I'm going to drop this note down here. And that becomes the five, the one, and the four. And drop the four down to the three. And then I'm going to play, um, I, I'll, I'll play up here. So I have the one, three, five. And then I'm going to raise this note up. And that becomes the one, three, five. So you can see how the numbers constantly, they're, they're fluid. And then I'm going to um, bring this G up here. And now I have a one, three, and a, well, this becomes a seven now. But I'll drop down, you know, I'll use a diminished chord to get back to a one. A diminished can give you four different chords to move to, so it's a great cheat chord. And then um, I'll go up here to the C and, and bring this. G up to an A, and then I have actually a, a 5-7 chord, 
And then if I come back down here to the one, I have a one, five, and here's the four again, and I drop this down, and that becomes the three. Then if I drop this down, I have the one, a seven, and the four, and I can drop this down to the three, and then I can drop this, bring this up to the D, so I have the one, five, and this is the four, which drops down into the three, and then I can come back down to um, the G, and I have a, a one, three, and a five again. So let me try to play what I just, just fudged. So you can see how the notes are very fluid and you're not playing chords, you're playing relationships, always to maintain a one, three, and the five. And again, it doesn't matter if the three is flat or not. You're just looking for threes to lead you to the next note. That little chromatic thing I did at the end is called a regole or a rule. Um, rules were what kids studied at the age of five. It was the, the first lesson. So there are many different rules. The first rule they would learn would be the rule of sixth. So if I have a one, how do you harmonize a one with a three and a five? And this five, if you move up to a six, and then you drop the others down, that becomes a seven, and then you drop back down to the six. Seven, drop down to the six. Seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. Um, and the kids would learn that in every key, both ascending and descending. And then they would learn it in all the inversions, one, three, five. And descending, oops, sorry. Oops, sorry again. also learn it in the minor key and descending so those are again right regulates and there were hundreds of these rules which that the, the kids were taught and they would follow. Unfortunately, most of them are not written down because, again, they were taught to improvise, not to read. And they would, um, and people like Bach wrote, his, his, wrote out the rules and we can, we can dissect his music and analyze it and find a lot of the rules, like the rule of the six, the rule of the octaves. Um, so the rule of the six, Bach, Bach, used frequently in practically every piece you ever composed. Um, there would be things like um, or um, uh, shoot, come on, think, think. Well, one of the things that could happen with the rule of the sixth is that um, they can be converted in, because, because they use chord inversions, you can invert uh, the rules so that they are sequences of two fives. So, so two five, two five, two five, two five. So if I played a, a, a D, so if I'm in the key of C, 
and I played a two, that would be the D. So I'd play the one, three, five of the D. And of course, we all know where a two leads to, twos go to fives. And we know where fives go, they go to ones. But if we turn that one into a two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five. And then we could do it chromatically or do the two fives. Um, let's see, a couple of other Bach pieces that use the two fives. Um, um, So that's um, two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, one. Uh, another piece. Um. Again, two fives all over the place. Um, oh, there's so many of them. Uh, let's see. Ah, I can't think. So you can see that he would use the same thing over and over again. There's another rule in there, um, the rule of the chromatics, the rule of the octave. Again, you can harmonize an octave by playing its chords. Um, let me play, I'll play F minor, and again, you have to be able to figure out the chords for each of the notes, and it doesn't always have to be the same chord. You can invert the chord. This doesn't have to be a C, E, G. It could be a G, C, E, or an E, G, C. So you can invert the chords any way you want. And again, each note could be several different chords. So in F minor, so here... Those are the bass notes, the octave notes, and I'll put a chord for each of the notes. So a very famous piece is Paco Bell's Canon. Everybody thinks the chord progression is one, five, six, one, four, five, one, or something like that. Let me just play it once. Um. But it's not really that. It's actually a descending, C, a descending scale. Eight seven six five four three two one, and um, I'll just play the left hand note so you can hear the octave. And again, this is called the rule of the octave. I screwed up there, but you get the idea. So rules could be. Um, um, they could be chromatic also. Let me play a um, uh, let me play a chromatic scale and reharmonize the piece on the chromatics. Actually, let me go to the piano to do this. So I'm going to play uh, basically uh, that, and that's going to be the notes I harmonize off of, and then I'll do some kind of an improvisation.
So you kind of get the idea. You just figure out the bass notes, and then you reharmonize to the bass notes, and then fudge something up here. And that's how they used to improvise back in the 17th century. What had happened was that as people like Bach wrote down their music, and um, people didn't go to conservatory, they wanted the sheet music so that they can match the dots to the keys. I call them dot matchers. And um, for the most part, people who simply match dots are musically illiterate and because all they could do is match dots to keys. And they may be great sight readers, but they really don't know what they do, they're doing unless they actually get down to the nitty gritty of theory and study the notes as numbers. And a lot of people think that, that music is math, but the numbers are not mathematical. They are very much algebraic and geometric because you're looking for shapes and relationships and substitutions. This note may be a two right now, but as soon as I play the next chord, it could become a five, and which gives you a whole new two. So that's improvisation in the 17th century in a nutshell. Um, what I know is probably at a fifth, fifth five-year-old's level of understanding. Everything I cover just right now would be covered in their first year of conservatory. So. Um, uh, I've got a lot to learn, and I'll probably never learn as much as a five- or six-year-old would. But uh, that's it. Um, good luck. That's, that's improvisation in 15 minutes, but it's actually a lifetime of study.